Okay. Um, it's it's a uh, it's ninth week Wednesday. Um, on Friday we have uh, a guest speaker, Alex, and uh, and so I hope you will uh, all come and attend. And um, you know, Alex was a former student of mine, and you know, it's there's always a you know. Not that I can claim any <laughs> credit for anything, but just there's you always feel proud of seeing you know a, a student of yours um, go on and find great success, and so uh, very proud of Alex, um, you know, uh, and so uh, yeah, please uh, please come and listen to uh, to hear what he has to say. Um, on tenth week uh, on Monday is a holiday. So, uh, so we really only have two, like after today, we only have two lectures left in 10th week. And to be honest, I've covered, like after today's lecture, I've covered pretty much all of the content that I wanted to cover. And so I've got, I've got like two leftover lectures and uh, we can do whatever we want with them. Like if, if there's a topic that you're like, hey, you never talked about this in class. Can you talk about it? Like, I'll see if I could throw together just a quick. It might not be a polished lecture, but if, if you just want to learn about something there. Um, it's also the end of the academic year. And for some of you are, are graduating after this. And um, so sometimes I just uh, ramble on and say, give unsolicited advice about life. I don't know if you want to hear um, my random musings, but, uh, but whatever. Um, uh, we can do that too. Um, or we can also just take a day off, which maybe you guys want to. So, uh, so well, anyway, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll put a quick poll up on, uh, on Campus Wire. Oh, by the way, on Campus Wire, so I said there's extra credit for coming to um, Alex's talk on Friday, and then there's the extra credit meme thread, which um, has been um, a source of uh, much joy for uh, for me for the last few days. So thank you everybody for submitting your um, your pictures and memes. I, I wasn't expecting to see my face on every single one of them, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but apparently that's. That's the thread. I was I was hoping to see some pictures of your pets, because um, those are those are often fun. Um, so, but I don't know. I, maybe none of you have pets because you're living in campus housing, and I think that's not quite allowed, right? So, um, but anyway, uh, but I was happy to show you a picture of my dog. He is uh, he's 15. I'm very proud of him for. Uh, <laughs> We're making it to 15. OK. Um, all right, well, let's uh, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look. And I just thought I'd do a couple um, examples of principal components analysis in R. And I hope this text is big enough. Maybe I'll make it touch bigger here, OK? Um, let me see if I remember what. Um, so uh, here, I'm going to uh, generate some data, OK? And I'm creating a uh, two-dimensional data set using the multivariate normal, OK? This, uh, this matrix down here, uh, 9554, this is going to make my variance covariance matrix for a multivariate normal distribution, which means in the x1 direction, I have a variance of 9. And in the x2 direction, I have a variance of 4. And so, you know, standard deviation of 3 and 2, basically. And, um, and so if you figure, you know, 95% of your data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So in the x1 direction, 95% will be between plus or minus six of the mean and in the x2 direction 95 percent will be within plus or minus four of uh, the mean okay there's also covariance between x1 and x2 and so that means um, when we plot the data it will not 
just go uh, um, the ellipse, uh, the major and minor axis of the ellipse will not be parallel to x1 and x2, but because there's covariance, positive covariance between x1 and x2, we will see um, basically the major axis of the ellipse kind of um, have a positive slope there. Okay? Uh, we are going to generate 15 observations from the multivariate normal distribution, random values from the multivariate normal distribution. The mean is going to be 20 comma 4. Okay? And so therefore, if we think about the x1 direction, uh, which is centered at 20, again, 95% of our data should be within 20 plus or minus 6, so from around 14 to 26, and 99.7. And so out of 15 observations, probably all of them will be within 11 and 29. Okay, something similar for 40, 40 plus or minus 4 for 95%, 40 plus or minus 6 for practically all of them. And we can take a look. I mean, we can just print out x and just kind of with visual inspection, um, 20 plus or minus uh, 4 or whatever, that seems, uh, 20 plus or minus 6 does seem to cover um, most of our observations there. Maybe if I just round. It's easier when you only see one one decimal place or something, okay? And then 40 plus or minus 4 or something. Um, we can ask, what is the correlation between um, x1 and x2? And we get a correlation of around 0.93. And then the covariance is, uh, is similar, but uh, uh, our covariance, variance, covariance matrix, a diagonal of around 9 and 4, 4.5. And then the covariance between them is just a, is a little bit higher. And uh, anticipate it, and we'll just uh, create a plot of this. Okay. So this is uh, generated from the random multivariate uh, normal. Okay. And um, and what we'll do is we will perform principal components analysis. Okay. Principal components analysis, and the idea here being currently to kind of get. Uh, the coordinates of each point, we need we need two values, right? We need uh, the x1 value and the x2 value. I guess here it's v1 and v2. Um, and the question is, can we project this down to just one dimension? And if we project it down to one dimension, um, can we do it in such a way that maximizes the variance? And so uh, you can think of this as taking a light and shining a light so that the uh, the dots form a shadow, okay? And so if I were to just put the light at the top up here and just uh, cast a shadow, then basically I am completely eliminating V2 and we're just going to get the values in V1, right? And we would just get, uh, you know, if I had a I don't know, um, like a board here, and we cast the shadow, it would just be basically v1, and we would get like a dot plot of v1. I could also put the light over here and, and shine the light sideways this way, and we would basically be dropping the v1 variable, and we would just get a shadow along v2. So, and, and if I put the light over here, we would be losing a lot of information because we would just, the, the shadow would end up kind of forming along. You would end up having uh, a surface like this, and you would just have a few dots right here, right? And we have very little variance. If, if I were to put the light over here, and, and everything kind of just cast down this, this shadow right here. Okay. And so probably we will cast, uh, put a light source up here, it will cast like this way, and uh, somewhere along here we will have a shadow. Okay? Uh, and when we plot it, generally the line goes straight through the mean. Kind of like, I don't know, coming from both sides, and it just gets plugged. But basically, um, I think we're going to see something along this line up here. It's different from fitting a line of best fit. Okay, there's there's something. 
it feels a little bit like we're <laughs> fitting some kind of best fit line, but the best fit line tries to minimize the squares of the residuals, and the squares of the residuals are always um, in the um, direction of y, okay, right, vertical direction. And here we're, um, we're not doing that. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to subtract off, I'm going to first calculate the column means of x, okay, which is uh, 18.6 and 39, and I'm going to subtract off the means from the columns. Now, when I subtract off the means from the columns, because the way R subtracts values, I have to kind of do this transpose transpose business. And I think you guys saw this back when we did the what do you call it in your homework for the neural networks, like to subtract off the means, maybe like when you were like scaling or centering your data, or I don't know. Okay, but anyway. I'm going, to do, I'm going to transpose x, subtract off the means, and then I'm going to transpose it back. And so this will give me um, uh, the x values now that they're centered. And if I calculate the column means of x, the column means of x are 0, okay? Or effectively 0, um, you know, within, what do you call it, machine, uh, not exactly 0 because of, you know, machine error and things like that. Okay, so what do we do to calculate our uh, principal components? We will take the eigenvectors of our covariance matrix, okay? So now that I've centered the data, I get the covariance matrix, okay? So here's the covariance matrix. It is, uh, it is the same covariance matrix that we had of X. Okay, it's the same covariance matrix, right? Just shifting your data isn't going to change the covariance. So that's, that's still the same. Um, we will calculate the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. Now, you know, you could do this by hand. Like a two by, cal finding the eigenvectors of a two by two matrix, you know, we, we could do by hand. It's, you know, you get a system of equations, you get the, what, what do you call that, characteristic, uh, equation or something, you know, you subtract off i times um, lambda and, and you solve. But we'll just have the computer do it for us, okay? We just call eigen, okay? We call eigen on the covariance matrix. I'm going to store the results into E. And so when you call eigen on a square matrix, you're going to get two things back. You get um, the eigenvalues and you get the eigenvectors, okay? If just, I think there sometimes, um, maybe uh, finding eigenvectors, okay? So if you have forgotten how to find eigenvectors, oh, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of things. Okay, well, we have the internet, right? So you can always, Let's see, characteristic equation. Yeah, okay, so this is a good, you gotta be careful what you read on the internet, right? Sometimes somebody will say like, this is how you do something and you read it and you're like, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, okay, so, so this, you know, well this is like nice easy numbers to do and, uh, and then, you know, they can factor this and obviously, you know, in, in some cases it's like really hard, um, especially when you get like weird numbers. Um, and so, you know, finding the eigenvectors of something like this might be a little bit tough, but effectively that, that's, uh, that's the system in which we do it. Uh, um, okay, so, so here, just in this example, right, they find the characteristic equation. Wiki, how? Okay. Um, you know, they, they find the characteristic equation, um, you know, using the determinant, and then they set it equal to zero, et cetera, et cetera. And this one you can factor easily. If you can't factor a quadratic, what do you do? Quadratic equation, right? Negative b plus or minus whatever, whatever, something, something, four. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then that, that'll give you your, your roots as well. So, um, so anyway, you can, you can do that. Um, but anyway, you get, you get your eigenvalues and you get your eigenvectors. And so what we'll do is we'll take the first eigenvector here, okay? Now one thing to note 
about your eigenvectors is that the signs are arbitrary, okay? So your eigenvectors might point in this direction or, you know, if you have, if, if one of your vectors looks like this and it points in this direction, it's, it's the same as the one pointing in the negative direction. So you can kind of take an eigenvector and multiply by negative one and, it, and it's basically the same thing, okay? Um, okay, so anyway, we'll take uh, the eigenvectors and we'll take the eigenvalues and, uh, and then what I'm going to do is I will take both eigenvectors, okay, and I will take our center data and multiply them by both eigenvectors. And so when you multiply uh, data by a matrix, you're effectively doing some kind of scaling or rotating or, um, you know, you're doing a linear transformation. And in this case, this is going to perform a rotation of the data. Okay, we're going to perform a rotation of the data. So look at this, and what we're going to do is I'm going to just multiply um, the data, and when I plot this, we will get a rotation of it. Okay, so it ends up kind of, we were probably expecting it to just rotate a little bit, but it ends up kind of flipping them around and uh, rotating them like almost like these two dots rotate up to here and you know this kind of J looking thing ends up you know rotating around okay can we see that between uh, over here and over here and uh, and again you know I could take uh, I could just do like negative one times this and probably uh, you know that that ends up just flipping it around okay so this one this one's probably the rotation that we had in mind Okay, um, but again, the signs are a little bit arbitrary. So, you know, what Eigen produced did. Uh, oops, I'm just going to do a multiply by negative one. Oh, I'm forgetting about view quiz answers. Uh, our first view quiz answer will be the letter A. A as an apple. A as an apple is our first view quiz answer. Okay, what does it mean to keep only the first principal component? Okay. Keeping only the first principal component, basically, I'm getting rid of the second variable, and we're going to just project all of these things. So the little very vertical variation we see here is going to disappear, and um, and everything will just fall straight onto the uh, v1 axis. Okay, so here is uh, if I take just the first principal component, and I'm going to just multiply by negative one here, okay? And if I do this, oops. okay, uh, let me see if I can just print PC1, okay? So PC1 is currently our data, you know, we have 15 observations in two dimensions, and when I project it just down to one, uh, we get this. And let me let me make a little uh, uh, let me just do data dot frame on PC one AES X is PC one. Uh, oh, this helps if I spell. <laughs> Missing aesthetics y. Uh, okay, let's just do y equals zero. Okay, so let's see. 
that. Okay, let me Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let me do this. Okay, so here is the data and with both principal components, and then now I'm going to just drop this variable, and so everything will just collapse into just a single line here, okay? So you can kind of see, just by kind of flipping through, you can see, and, and we, lose, we lose information because some of these dots just kind of collapse right on top of each other. So even though there's, in this thing, there's 15 dots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, here, there are also 15 dots. It's just really hard to see. I guess you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, really uh, on top of each other. And then uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, it's just some of these dots just end up like almost directly on top of each other. Okay, but, the, um, but that's what it is, okay? And so, so here, when we reduce, we've reduced from two dimensions down to just one dimension. Okay, and the question is how much how much information have we lost? Okay. Well, we've lost some information, right, in terms of the amount of variation. And so, um, but can we recover back the two dimensions? Can we recover the two dimensions back? And the answer is kind of, kind of, but everything is going to exist just along kind of one line here. Okay. So. Um, it's kind of like when reporting your SAT score, you can report both both pieces, okay? And you can say, you know, I got um, 700 math, 700 verbal, and my, I had a total score of 1,400 or something like that, okay? Or, uh, you know, someone else could say I got 600 verbal and 800 math for a total of 1,400, uh, also fine, okay? and uh, and you can plot all of that data and you'll see some variation, right? Some, um, when you reduce down to one principal component, you're basically reporting only the total score. And so the person who got a 600-800 will look exactly identical as the person who got 700-700, will look exactly identical to the person who got, I don't know, uh, 750 and what well, adds up to 750 and 650 or you know, whatever two numbers add up to 1400, right? So. Um, so that's basically what's going to happen, is that these uh, different values will just get collapsed into, into one. So you definitely lose some information. And so um, to recover kind of the two dimensions, so, so basically if you say, all right, to go from 1400, can we guess what the verbal and math scores were? Okay, probably the safest thing would, would be to say, okay, half was verbal and half was math, right? So anybody who scored 1400, we're gonna guess their original values were 700, 700. And that might be true for some, but it's not gonna be true for everyone, okay? Anybody who scored 1300, we would guess 650, 650, but we obviously, we know that not every single person would have scored that combination. So, um, so that's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to recreate the data based off of this one dimension. And so, you know, we're just guessing and assuming that things kind of happen. And so we're gonna take this and we're gonna rotate it back into two dimensions. And so I take um, my principal component and I multiply it by the transpose of basically the eigenvectors. I take my first eigenvector, my, my Q, I take the transpose of it, I multiply it by PC1. Okay, and this gives me back our data. And I'm gonna add back the means to kind of get this thing, all right? And so when I plot this, I just get a rotation. Uh, I, I get the data rotated back. Uh, and this might be, I think I, I, think I need to, Multiply this by negative one again. All right, so let me 
I'm going to delete this one and delete that, delete that. And then let me just multiply this by negative one here. Okay, so here's the original data. And then when we reduce it to one principal component and project it back, we get this. Okay, so this is the original data reduced down to one dimension. So instead of getting this person got 600, and this person got eight, uh, 600, 800, and this person got 800, 600, and this person got 650, 750, and this person got 700, 700. They all just show up basically as this one dot of 1,400 total. Okay, um, and that that's basically what's happening, right? So you know, this person might be the one that got you know higher on one subject and lower on the other subject, and this is kind of the opposite, higher on another subject and lower on another subject, but they get they get reduced basically to the same kind of same point right here. Okay. And that's that's basically what's happening. Okay. Um, R has two kind of built-in principal components functions. There's princomp, which uses eigenvalue decomposition, and then there's PRComp, which is which uses SVD uh, sing, singular value wait, SVD decomposition. Okay. And uh, the way I've taught you was using that kind of eigenvector eigenvalue decomposition. SVD is it you know something? It's a little bit different, um, and uh, I, I'm not going to cover it. <laughs> okay, um, but you guys covered SVD in linear algebra, I think. I imagine, maybe at least mentioned in passing. It's a little bit. Uh, um, Similar but different. Okay, you, you end up producing like three matrices that multiply together. Okay, so anyway, that's um, that's that. I wanted to show you um, an impractical example where we can really see dimension reduction at play and and what what it means to kind of lose information here. Okay, and uh, here let me give you your second view quiz answer. Second view quiz answer is the letter C. C as in cat. C as in cat. Okay, so here I'm going to, um, uh, whoops, I'm going to load up an, uh, an image, a black and white picture from, uh, are you guys familiar with Ansel Adams, the uh, photographer? So uh, Ansel Adams is, uh, or was, a kind of like a landscape photographer, uh, famous for doing kind of black and white images. And, um, and, and truly uh, some, some very, very beautiful work. And so I'm just taking this, this image, the Tetons and the Snake River, okay? And, uh, and, and I highly recommend that you just look at some of the, uh, the beauty, right? You, you think like how much Right? When you're reduced to just a black and white palette, you know, you feel like you'd lose a lot of nature and majestic beauty, but I think I think he still manages to capture quite a bit of it. Okay. And and unfortunately this projector itself, we, we lose some some stuff. But uh but on a real screen, just just look it up. Yosemite, some of the pictures from Yosemite, truly um truly amazing. So anyway, I'm gonna take that that picture of Tetons and the Snake River. I'm gonna load it up. And I'm using this uh, library imager, and it takes this JPEG, which has eight, is uh, 899 by 720 pixels. Okay, so uh, so this image, 899, 720, which is how many? What? How big is this? 899 by 720, 647,000. Okay, 647,000 values, and. Uh, and when you uh, when you load it, it there's also um, it supports colors. Okay, a grayscale image only has uh, one color channel, um, but most other images you'll have three: red, green, and blue. And then also it supports like GIFs, 
for like animations and different things. And so we're just going to take one. And so, so basically I just have this 899 by 720 matrix. And um, you can kind of plot the image in, uh, in R here, OK? And so you can see on the x-axis, it goes up to 899. And on the vertical axis, it goes to 720, OK? Where 0, 0 is the top left corner. OK, so what I'm going to do is I am going to do some principal components analysis. OK, so what we'll do, so you can think of this as a matrix. And you can think of this, if, you, if we pretend this is a tidy data frame, if we pretend this is a tidy data frame, I have 899 variables, basically 899 columns, and 720 observations if that kind of makes sense, right? I've got a matrix that's 899 by 720. Each value in that matrix represents a pixel, how bright or dark this pixel is going to be. And we can say, well, I've got 720 rows, and each row consists of 899 values. So I can treat this as kind of 899 variables and columns and 720 rows. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract off the column means. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, the column means. And so Adam's means there's 899 values here. And uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract off the column means from all of all the columns. Okay, so all columns will now have a mean of zero, and I can just check are all of the values. Um, after I've centered it, so all the columns have a mean of zero, um, do they indeed have a mean of zero? And the answer is yes. Okay, what would our image look like if I plot this thing after subtracting the column mean? Okay, you can barely tell, but between this image and this image, what happens is I now have slightly vertical streaks here. Okay, I have slightly vertical streaks. And basically, if if one column had a very bright, like uh, the sum of the pixels, like if you look at this one column, this one column, there's like kind of a lot of bright areas, right? There's this very bright area, and so its column has a like a higher mean, okay? And over here there's kind of a lot of dark, and so over here there's a it has a kind of a lower mean. And so when we subtract off the means, it kind of it centers it, and so we end up kind of subtracting things off. And so the bright areas get kind of we get a column that where we're subtracting off things, so the value ends up getting darker. And over here, you know, you can barely tell, but maybe it's a tiny bit brighter. OK, it's, it's hard to see on the projector. You'll just have to take my word for it. But basically, we get these vertical streaks in it. Okay, I'm going to calculate the covariance matrix. Okay, The covariance matrix is going to be huge. Okay, The uh, um, dimensions of this covariance matrix is going to be 899 by 899, even bigger than the original image, which is 899 by 720. Okay. But what I'm going to do, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix, okay? And, uh, and it calculates the eigenvectors, okay? And so the eigenvectors, I now have 899 eigenvalues, and I have 899 eigenvectors, each eigenvector having 899 values in it, right? So, so now I've gotten much more, <laughs> much more stuff. OK? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the dimensions of my data by just keeping only the 50, the first 50 eigenvectors. OK? So I'm going to just take the first 50, the first 50 columns in the eigenvectors matrix. OK? And so now if I say, what are the dimensions here? 899 by 50. OK? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to project my data down to this, um, 899 by 50. Now, if I were to try to 
plot. If I were to try to plot this, this would be absolute nonsense. If I take my projected data, okay, so the projected data, there's 899, it's 899 by 50. I've got 899 rows, 50 columns. And if I project it, I get this, okay? This, it just looks like gray with a few dots in here. This captures most of the variation captured in this image, okay? Again, it's kind of like going from your SAT math and verbal and reducing it down to one thing, which ends up capturing a lot of the variation, not at all of it, but a lot of it, okay? We've re reduced it down to 50, 50 columns, and it just looks like a gray thing, but it captures most of the variation, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, take this data that, that's been reduced to just 899 rows, uh, 50 columns, and we're going to kind of recover it. Recover the original 899 by 720 structure. Again, like if you report somebody has a 1400 SAT total, and I said, recover, tell me what you think the math and verbal scores are. You'd say, well, I think 700, 700, that's probably a safe guess, okay? And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna say, here, here are 50 values. Try to guess what the whole row of uh, or the, um, I, yeah, I've got 50 values of 899. Try to recover 720 out of that 50. Okay, so here's 50 values. Now get, get the whole 720 out of it. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, so this is kind of, we're going, we're doing dimension reduction, right? 720 down to 50, and then we're going to get back to, um, to uh, what do you call it? Um, back to 720. So I'm going to project, uh, take the projection, wrote, uh, multiply by the transpose of those principal components. So now I've recovered 720 by 899. We're going to add the means back, and then let's just plot this. Okay, and this is the uh, the image. Okay, compare this to the original image. So here, let me let me make this bigger. Okay. Can you guys see? So this is the original image. Eight hundred ninety nine by seven hundred twenty, and this is kind of what we've recovered after reducing it at one point down to just 50 values, okay? So we had, you know, 720 values, we reduced it down to 50, and we said, based on these 50, try to figure out what your original 720 were, right? So again, kind of like with the SAT, we say, the original values were 600, 800, we reduce it down to one by giving you a total score of 1400, and they say, now recover back the original scores, okay, giving, with, using only 1400, and your best guess is 700, 700. Okay, so we've lost a little information. It's not 100% accurate. But if you compare the original with this, it does a fairly decent job, I would argue. Okay, so this is after basically our data compression step. Okay, the original data had, you know, each column had 720 values. And this is kind of recovering the 720 values after reducing it down to 50, okay? And so this is not how we compress images on the internet and stuff, but this could, you could have a data compression kind of scenario here where you reduce the image 700, uh, 899 by 720, reduce it down to 899 by 50, transfer the smaller package of data, and then you recover the original of 899 by 720. And of course, anytime you do data compression, you lose some information, but maybe not so much, right? So we're, we're reducing it from 720 down to 50. So what is that? One fourteenth of the data, something around there. Okay, so around 7%. Okay, we re reduced uh, down to 7% of the original um, matrix size. Okay, now what, what if we kept a different number 
of principal components. So instead of keeping 50, what if I kept 100? Or what if I kept uh, 10, okay? Um, how much of a difference would our uh, pictures be? So let me, um, so what I've done is I've created a script that's gonna say keep just one principal component, keep two principal components, keep three, four, five, up to 10, and then we'll start going to 12, 14, 16, 18, and then you know, 30, 35, 40, 50, 70, 90, 120, up to 500 out of the seven, uh, 899. Oh, and I'm gonna run out of time. Okay, so we run this. Let me go ahead and give you your last view quiz answer. Last view quiz answer today is the letter E. E as an elephant. E as an elephant, this is our last view quiz answer. Okay, let me see. These are the images. So if we keep only one principal component, this is the image that it recovers. Um, it's garbage. Okay, oh, that's Audrey Hepburn. That was a different black and white image. Okay, this is with, okay, I don't know what order this is. Okay, nine principal components. Okay, I don't know what happened to, uh, <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, here's nine, here's 10 principal components. Here's 12, 14, 16. So as I add more, keep more principal components, 18, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 70, 90, 120. Here, let's put the original image over here just for comparison. Oh, something went wrong. Okay, this is the original one, I think. Okay, this is 150 principal components. Well, with the projector, you can barely tell, right? The projector like loses data <laughs> as it is, right? Um, one thing you can think about as is so one is that we get more structure, more more brightness, or, or uh, more clarity. Another thing that happens is as we get into higher amounts of principal components, one thing that happens with the image is that we are increasing the contrast. Okay, contrast is kind of how different is the whites from the blacks in the image, right? How different is the bright areas from the dark areas in the image? And if you think about that, that's almost exactly what the variation in your image data captures, right? Variation is how spread out are your data? How, how different is the highest from the lowest values? And, uh, and so as we include more principal components, we are capturing more of the variation in our data, which as far as images go, translates to more contrast. Um, again, this is not how it's done on the internet. Just because the computational power required to cal calculate your eigenvectors and then uh, recover the original data. It, it, it's just not practical uh, in that regard. So, um, so like JPEG and other lossy forms of compression, um, you know, use other techniques uh, to kind of compress images, and that's that's from an engineering standpoint much better. But as far as PCA goes, this is a it is a theoretically feasible, just practically not reasonable solution for image compression. Um, but it can be used for data compression or data uh, dimension reduction in, uh, in lots of ways. Okay, that's it for today. Um, hope, have a good rest of your day and we will see you on Friday for our, uh, our talk.